Uh, Zach, what the heck are we reviewing today? What is this? This is, uh, <laughs> they sell pre old rusty bikes? No, we're not reviewing it. I have a challenge for us. Next, and now let's review. So Zach, this bike, is this like an old bike? It's all rusty and dusty and old. Yeah, it is. Okay, but it's not even an e-bike. What are we doing reviewing it? I have a challenge for you. Okay, what is that? Let's make it into an e-bike. Oh, no, no. Do you remember how much work it was to convert the MG into an electric car? Mm -hmm. We needed batteries and motor controllers and uh, adapters to convert the motor to control the transmission and all that stuff. And look at this. How, I mean, this wasn't ever made to have an electric motor strapped to the back of it. Um, I talked to this company called Switch, and I think everything we need to make this into an e-bike is in this box. Really? Yep, so that's my challenge. Let's see if we can take this old bike, which, I mean, let's be honest, many of us have a bike like this. Pretty good bike, actually, it's just True. dirty. It's been sitting around because you're like, oh, I want an e-bike instead. And so for way less than the price of a new e-bike in many cases, they're claiming you can turn your bike into an e-bike. So let's, uh, let's try it out. All right, so I think it's important to show that we have not opened this box yet, now, we are kind of pros at turning cars into electric, but we are not pros at turning bikes into electric. So I want to see if, you know, the average DIYer can do it themselves. So let's open up the box. Let's see what's inside. Okay. Fancy packaging with all sorts of printing on it. Um, all Welcome right. to your new switch kit. Okay. We've got a bike wheel with a rim and it looks like a hub motor. Yep. Okay, but where's the derailleur go and stuff like that? Well, this is going to go on the front wheel. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, so you don't have to get in any of the gear stuff. Okay, I'll hand you that. Okay. Not too much else in this box, so some cardboard. Well, there better be more in the box. Yeah, I hope so, right? Um, let's see, we have accessories. Okay. And we have what looks like the switch itself. Turn on the battery at the switch before first use. So I think that this actually sits on the front handlebar and is the battery. Cause it's not, it's not that heavy, but it is kind of heavy. I was wondering where it was gonna go. All right, cool. All so right. looks like three basic things here. Yeah. That's it? Cause yeah, uh, it's just. And you might be asking, I know you're asking right now. You're like, Zach, how'd you know that the wheel was gonna be the right wheel? So when you go on to switch, you tell them about your existing bike, you tell them all these specifics about the color and the size and they give you the correct rim. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Now we have these little boxes. So we have the accessories, which I'm just gonna bust into. Are there any instructions there? Uh, no instructions here. They're here. I have okay, that. You got them. So we've got the conversion kit quick start guide for full instructions and fitting videos. Please vis visit switchbike.com slash instructions. Oh, you have to attach a pedal sensor. So oh. basically in oh, the I was box. Wondering about that too. So you got your motor wheel power pack, which is this. Uh, handlebar mount, which I think is in here, pedal sensor, charger, and plug. And then you have a one-year warranty. You have the steps. Um, it looks like there's four steps and they give you four different languages in order to do those steps and that's it. Uh, so I think a lot of this is gonna be um, videos online that could help us out. Well, I mean, this is the quick start guide. They do have an instruction manual, oh, much this thicker. Is... <laughs> yeah. I know you wanna throw that away, but don't. Let's, uh... <laughs> okay. We might need us. And then in the box, very nicely packed. Oh, and with the little pinch pulls. Oh yeah. What's that? That is the handlebar mount. Handlebar mount. And we've got our pedal assist sensor. Okay. We've got our charger plug and we've got our charger. Excellent. Dad, you know, you need all the stuff. Here's all the stuff. Here's all the stuff. And, and look then, how small it is. I, I know, this is a very, I mean, compared to most e-bikes, and I know normally you have the whole bike, but. I was expecting the motor to like take up the whole thing. I don't know why, because I've seen plenty of hub motors. So, right. oh, I'm really excited. Do you want me to read the directions? Or do you just want to open boxes? I just want to open boxes. I just want to see what this part looks like. This part is, I think, the part that you're going to be looking at the most. Oh, your battery. This is the battery. And so this is where the battery connects with all these different electrical connections right there. Um, and it looks like it has a little bag, which I probably shouldn't play with. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's follow the directions. I'm just excited. <laughs> I know you are. Okay. All right, first step is to mount the motor wheel. Fit the motor wheel, it says. Motor cable on the left of the bike. Readjust the brakes if necessary. Tighten the wheel nuts. So we got a little work ahead of us here because we got to take off our existing um, tire. tire and our um, tube. tube and put it on here. Okay. All right, let's do it. I like it. It has check marks, uh, yeah. check boxes, so you can 
check things off. Okay, so let's take this wheel off. Okie doke. We've already released the brakes, which is easy to do. Yes, because this is an old bike that doesn't have caliper brakes or anything like that. And I think this is a pretty quick... And again, that's something you tell them when you're ordering it so they know whether or not there's brake rotors on it or not. I see. And uh, wow, this is very easy. They have a quick replacement wheel. Okay, so this wheel itself won't be used, but we can reuse the tire. Right, when we want to so that they'll match. Okay, so first step is gonna be to let all the air out of the tire. And I honestly will say this would be a good point if the bike has been sitting for years to maybe replace the tube, replace the tires. Right. And this is a 250 watt, 36 volt motor, by the way, from Switch. It'd be interesting because we haven't, that I know of, had an electric bike with a motor on the front other than the Ad Motor Trike. trike. Okay. Um, and so this will be our first bicycle um, with a motor on the front. Right, now typically motor on the back is nicer for, you know, acceleration because front wheel drive cars are known to, if they're too powerful to slip, but 250 watts, we're not gonna run into that issue, I don't think. And what are you doing right now? I'm removing the tire Fine, from the wheel. Everything? This is a tire tool. They are very cheap and they are very helpful. So if you ever need to remove a tire or uh, replace a tube or anything like that, you should definitely pick up one of those. Sometimes they come with your new e-bike kit. Yes. Sometimes they don't. So this has been a pretty easy process. So now the only thing I have to do is pull the tube off and that has a little nut on the bottom here. So I'm just gonna loosen that so that way the tube will come off the rim. And I don't wanna lose that nut. And I do wanna point out, you know, when you're um, on the Switch website, they ask you questions like, what are the colors of the spokes? What is the color of the rim? And if you look, Look at this, it's a, like a perfect match. Oh wow, look at that. So same wheel basically, only this one is made for, well it has the, the hub motor in the middle. Yep. And uh, good thing we're replacing this one because it's uh, falling apart. <laughs> oh, and what's the weight difference would you say? Uh, just hold both, I just, I mean I know we're adding a motor. Quite a bit. I would say that the old one probably weighs, what do you think, about a pound? Yeah, pound. And this one's at least six or eight. Hmm, would you say? Yeah, I guess you're in the right range there. But I mean, that makes sense. We had to add a motor. Yeah. But nothing like what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like 20 pounds or something. Yeah, no, it's no big deal. Um, all right, so then we have our tire and our tube, which is inside the tire at the moment. Um, and I, you're keeping that tube just a little bit inflated, right? That makes it a little bit easier than if it was totally floppy, or uh, are you going to let all the air out? You could probably let all the air out. And one thing you might want to do at, at this point is to clean out uh, the inside of the tire because any little bits of rocks and uh, sand can start to degrade the inner tube, which could lead to flats in the future. We're going to skip that step for now. Of course we are. I want to get the bike working before we... Okay, so... So you're lining up the hole. So I'm going to put the hole roughly right where there. that is. So I'm going to start off by putting uh, the stem of the inner tube through the hole of the wheel. Pulling it through, then I'll, I'll use the nut to secure it. I won't go too nuts. <laughs> Oh, and one more question. Is there a direction to the tire? Because at this point, I may be holding this wrong. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. It says to make sure that the motor cable is on the left of the bike. And so if we flip it over, this is the right side of the bike. Okay. This is the left side. So the motor cable would be on this side. Uh-huh. And I guess we could look at the existing tire. Would that tell us anything? Yeah, I think it's backwards. Okay. I'm glad I caught that. Yeah, good catch. Good catch. So we had a 50% uh, chance of success and we failed. Failure is a chance to learn. But hang on, ready? And here's how you can learn. Whoa. Oh, 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 oh. Fancy way to yeah. fix the problem. <laughs> Didn't have to take off the nut, huh? <laughs> so now I'm just gonna, I think I'll do it kind of one one lip at a time. Okay. I'm gonna grab my tire tool. And Does that help to get this down over it? Uh, you no, space. you want these inside. I think it should be fairly easy to do, maybe without a tool, but the tool can always help. Let me see if I can. Yeah, so we got it like 60% of the way, but now it looks like the tool is gonna be a necessary. Might wanna consider some new tires, because these are looking a little worse for wear, which is something to consider if you're gonna be converting a bike. If you are converting a fairly new bike, it's probably not that big a deal, but if you're converting an older bike, um, you may run into problems with just old bike problems, like needing new tires, if they're starting to kinda, I think this might be even dry rot. There we go. 
All right, so we got one side on, and now just the last bit here. Tire tool is coming in clutch. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so now we have our old tire on the new motor rim. It should be going in the right direction. And then maybe we'll just put a little bit of air pressure. A little in there. bit of air. I think that makes sense. There we go. Okay, so about three and a half psi, and that's just enough to hold the you know tire on the rim and stuff like that, but not too high that if there was a big problem it would explode the tire. It says uh, tighten the wheel nuts. So go ahead and put it back on. Okay. And now the thing to keep in mind is there are these washers. And do they fit on our, ooh. The flat sides of the axle should fit within the forks. If it does not fit, please check the troubleshooting section. And just so you guys are knowing, um, if the motor wire goes on the left side of the bike, the opposite side of the chain. So that's another way to think of it if you're like, what's the left side? Mm. Stupid. No, okay. So I'm pulling off this little rubber thing here, so that way I can loosen um, this nut. Switch also asks on their website, what was the distance between the fork? So we measured that for them as well. And it looks correct. So I'm just loosening this to leave enough room. There we go. That one slid on nicely. And so did the other side. I'm going to replace the nut on this side. It's all coming together pretty nicely there. Let's and just make sure that the motor wire is pointing towards the ground when the bike is upright. It will be, yes. So again, the flat sides of the axle should fit within the forks. Which they do. Fit the torque washer lips into the fork slot. Assemble the wheel motor wheel to the forks with the torque washers installed as shown. The torque washer protrusion should fit snugly inside the gap in the fork. And so this is important because the motor is going to be applying a torque um, obviously to the wheel and it needs something to push off of and and well of course the axle is flattened on two ends which uh, should give you um, you know something to push off of those washers are giving you even more uh, surface area to push against so then uh, assemble both axle nuts tightly with a spanner or in america a wrench that is on so now i'm going to replace these nice little rubber caps so you don't whack your ankle on this and this one's interesting because it has a hole in it with the cable that runs through it. So it goes on a little funky, but it should go right on. And that nicely bends the motor wire so that way you can, you know, get it to go the way you want it. Spin the motor wheel with your hand to check it can spin freely and it isn't touching the forks. If it is touching, please check the troubleshooting section. The wheel should be harder to turn backwards than turning forwards. If it is the opposite, then the motor has been installed backwards. I think that we did it the right way. And let me just look and see if there's any. So there's no arrows indicating which direction it should be, although we did install it correctly because I don't hear anything in that direction. And if you spin it backwards, yeah, you can hear that. Yeah. So, okay, I think All we're right, good. Next, we're gonna adjust the brakes. Okay, here are the brakes. I've, I've loosened them off so that we could get the wheel on and off. So now the one thing that the kit doesn't come with is any tools. Um, we've obviously been using some tools to you know, get the job done here. Um, I would say... I think it's smart because they just don't know what your bike, bike has. Is. Yeah. And if they gave you some tools and it turned out to be the wrong ones... So. Yeah, you wouldn't want to round over bolts. And also, and I mean, if you're not a DIYer, then don't attempt this. I gotta right. be honest. You, you gotta be a little bit handy. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna loosen... So tell me how to adjust the brakes to make sure I'm doing it. It right. just says to follow the manufacturer's instructions. Oh, great. Okay, it, that, that went on. That went on. And it's rubbing a little bit. Um, but let, let me just spin it for a second. So it seems like there might be a tiny wobble. I'm going to call that good for now. Yep. That's and, something that can be fixed and spin later. spin it one more time. Nice. Brakes are working. We can adjust those even more when we're riding it. Yep. All right, we're on to the universal pedal sensor. Universal. There are four different configurations for the universal pedal sensor. Which one you should use depends on the size of gap between the pedal arm and the bike frame and the shape of your pedal arm. So there's basically a four millimeter plus, a two millimeter to four millimeter, ah! and a less than two millimeter. Ah! Look at all this stuff. Ah! Oh my God, there's so much stuff in here. There's so many tiny little things. I'm getting overwhelmed. Okay. Look at that, we got these little teeny tiny 
shim things. Shimmy things. I'm overwhelmed. How big is the gap between the pedal arm and the frame? And what shape is the inside of your pedal arm? And they give photo examples. Huh? I have some magnets. I have some little plasticky things. And I have a wire with a clip, looks like. And then a some kind of a metal thing. And then this little, a little adhesive pad. Okay. So number one is the magnetic disc. Two adhesive pads. Which is this. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay, so we have our magnetic ring right here. And then we also have the ring that should go around it. Now we're just trying to figure out how to disconnect. Uh, oh, it just pops apart. <laughs> so basically there's four different ways and we should figure out what setup is ours. So that'll tell us. Okay. So, I mean, it's gonna go. So that it says, how big is the gap between the pedal arm and the frame? That is the first question. Is it less than two millimeters? Is it two millimeters to four millimeters or is it four millimeters plus? And so if you can read that, this is what we're looking at there. I think it's more than four millimeters would be my guess. So we have different thicknesses of shims here. So I think the thick shims are gonna work. Why do we need them? Uh, I think they hold it onto the frame because the gap is big enough. And it says easy fit regular. And I think that these are the easy fit regular shims. Cause yeah, it shows them on this picture. So now fit the magnet disc either side of the crank axle. The side of the bike should be opposite the side with the chain. The smooth side of the magnet disc must be facing the sensor, which I think is the sensor will be that way. And so we'll put the shims on. All right, so this is a pretty neat little mechanism here. So you have these little shims and then they just click right into place. It's really neat. Okay, so we've determined that in our case, we don't need these shims. Mm -hmm. um, and that's mainly because the shaft of this is too, the diameter of the shaft is too big for the shims to really fit around, um, which means that we're just gonna have to kind of just go around it. Um, and the cool thing is that this just sort of snaps into place like that. Um, then we're gonna add this retention ring to hold it in place. And then we're gonna add our uh, magnetic sensor somewhere on the frame, which is gonna detect when you're pedaling the bike. Either side of the crank axle, the side of the bike should be opposite the side with the chain. Easy peasy. Yep. Okay, so that's the retention ring is now on. And so now we have our magnetic uh, disc. And then we're, I think we're gonna zip tie that to the pedal. And then our pedal is going to, you know, it'll tell the bike when we're pedaling. Yep, so there's your zip ties that came with the kit. Okay. Before starting, clean your, clean your pedal arm of any dirt and debris. This will allow the pedal disc arm to fit securely to the surface. Loosely cable tie the magnet disc arm to the inside of your pedal arm in at least two points. Reposition the magnet disc so that it is close to the sensor and aligned. Check that the alignment is correct by rotating the pedal arm backwards and watching for any movement. After this check, tighten the cable ties completely. Once aligned in position, tighten the screws to lock the disc arm into place. What screws is it talking about? Uh, These right here. Right. Yeah. Yes. And so he's going to do this loosely right now. Okay. It's about there. And then I'll do the other side going the other direction for strength. Okay. So once you've got them kind of loose, it says, um, loosely cable the tie to the magnet disc arm to to the inside of your pedal arm, at least two points. Reposition the magnet disc so that it is close to the sensor and aligned. What Check. sensor? Have we installed the sensor yet? Did we skip that step? Yeah, we haven't shown the sensor yet. Now we talk about the sensor. And huh. um, the next step is attach the pedal sensor to the bike. Weird. They're kind of skipping steps on us here, which is a little annoying. So remove the pedal sensor adhesive cover. Attach the pedal sensor to the frame of the bike close to the magnetic disc. And here's a picture of where it should go. Okay. I think that we'll get there. I just feel like I want to get the this aligned because you can see how much wobble there is in it. I mean, it's kind of a chicken and the egg kind of problem where it's like, how do I know where to align this unless I have the sensor on? But how do I know where to put the sensor until I have it uh, properly installed? So here I have my pedal sensor and I believe that this is the mag this is the magnet reader pedal sensor and you can see the little crosshair on it. You can see a good shot of it there. Oh, okay. So it is on the back side of it. It's definitely not perfect, but I'm going to call it good right there. Yeah. So I'm going to try and... It moves it when you do Yeah, it. when I'm cranking down on the zip ties, it moves it a lot. We'll keep cranking until you get close. Yeah. And then... Still so much movement. 
Maybe another zip tie. What's also not helpful is that this pedal is tapered, mm -hmm. which means that the further it slides down, the looser it gets, mm -hmm. and the further up it goes, the tighter it gets. Mm -hmm. I think one thing you can do is wrap the zip tie around something strong, um, and then you can really crank on it. Uh, but you need something else to... Do you want a plier? Pull against. I think using this spanner would be better. You don't want to grip it with the pliers? No, it, it'll create a stress concentrator, whereas wrapping it around won't. Learn something new every day. Yeah. Stress concentrators. Yeah. This okay. does seem like a weak part of the design. It does seem a little weak in my opinion. But we'll wait and see. I'll, I'll withhold judgment until I see it. Because I mean, if it has a throttle, I'm not going to be as displeased. There's a stress concentrator. Yeah, absolutely. It's a bit more firm on there. Um, I'm going to call it good there. Okay. Um, so the next step is to attach the uh, pedal sensor to the bike. Okay. So, so there's a rag right there. So Jesse's cleaning a spot because we're going to be using double-sided tape to uh, stick it to the bike. And it shows how it should be correctly installed. I don't know if we have enough room, being honest. Put it as flatly to the pedal as we can. It's really tight. Well, that's good. It shows it being very tight. This tube is extra fat. Mm. I feel like most tubes are going to be a little bit narrower. How about this tube? Yeah. And it's right in the way of the gear thingy. But I mean, bikes have all sorts of different tubes. I know, but this one's really tight. If it can be at an angle, I think we're probably okay. So if you can see, we've got our... Uh, so not a lot of space. I mean, I, I suppose that's... You can't have too much space, so... I mean, it's stressful, though. I'm not feeling stressed, but maybe because I'm not doing it. I think so. And now you're lining it up so that it's right over the center of the magnet. magnet. Are you doing that correctly? Uh-huh. It's on. There's nothing you can do. Great. I don't like that at all. I hate double stick tape. You're also going to be zip tying it. Basically, it says to check to make sure that you've put that on correctly. Is there any way to check? Yeah, they have so much more room in the, in the manual. We're, we're really tight. So now that he's double stuck it to the uh, frame, he's cable tying it in place. And I'm going, making sure to go underneath the, the gear, <laughs> the gear lines. Oh, the gear lines, yeah. All right, so the zip ties they provided, unfortunately, are just too short. And again, it's because we have this sort of, it's this extra wide tube. But I will say, I mean, this is a Trek bike. It's very common, very <laughs> popular bike in the US. Um, in fact, one of the reasons I chose this to do the review for was it's a very very common I, I didn't you know it's a trek bike yeah i know all right so i had to go get some uh, zip ties because the ones they gave us are too short right yes so they gave us uh, these little ones um and, and unfortunately to get around this fat tube uh we needed some longer ones luckily we found yellow so it'll match it'll blend in even better perfect so um and the other good thing is that um it's they're just big enough or just small enough to fit through uh, the sensor. So they did at least anticipate you needing bigger zip ties, but they didn't give you any. So, so if switch, you... if you're watching, send us uh, so, bigger zip ties. I time. think the bigger, the better. I, mean, I don't I don't think it makes any sense to go small. I mean, I will say in their defense, this is more of a um, mountain bike, mountain bike. And I think they were thinking that you would be doing this to more of a road bike. While Jesse's doing that, the directions are great. They have a whole book full of pictures, really well explaining what's going on. So far, there's been no confusion about what we're supposed to be doing. Mm. Well, Jesse's a little confused. And also, they do have links to videos. If we were smarter than we are, we would have watched <laughs> those first. So I got that zip tied on. Great. Tighten the screw to prevent it from moving. Gotcha. Then we're gonna take cable tie in place, pedal sensor to the frame. We're gonna route the wire along the down tube of the bike to the handlebars using the cable ties to secure to your frame. This might be another case where we wanna use yellow ones so that they match. Yes. So a little. Little tip, uh, <laughs> get cable ties that are the color of your frame, which would have been nice for them to ask you online. So switch again mm. if you're watching. Um, just ask the user what their color of bike is and then give them that color cable tie. Yeah. So yeah, you're gonna go down the frame to up to the handlebars there. Yep. I think I can do it with two. Okay. Yeah, because this would look dumb if it was black. And again, Jesse's avoiding the um, cables that adjust the gears. I should put, put the, the wire in through. first there. And I'll kind of stick it up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and route it fancy here. You don't have to necessarily do this, but I'm gonna leave the Trek logo nice and visible and put the wire all hidden up in here. All fancy like. 
But of course, now the zip tie interferes with the Trek logo, so I have to sneak it in. <laughs> there, you can barely tell. <laughs> Maybe one more. Yeah, I think one more. Jesse doesn't care about my side of the bike, but he's going between the T and the R. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that the other side of the bike had the Trek logo. All right. All right, well, that looks good. Okay, so good. now cut the motor wire. <laughs> We're on to adding the rubber spacers to the handlebars. So is it time to flip this baby over? I think so. Yeah, the front wheel is quite a bit heavier now um, and I can feel the bike getting heavier. It's gonna get a little more heavy once we put on uh, all the rest of the stuff. Right, all right, so next step is uh, fit the rubber handlebar spacers onto the handlebars, 22 millimeter diameter handlebars only. For larger size handlebars, e.g. on mountain bikes, they are not required. Okay, so let me lower our bike here on our amazing bike working surface of science. I am really curious to see how this battery handles. It's small. It is small. It's small. But it's a fairly small motor. Uh, I'm pointing at the wrong place. 250 watt motor. All right, so this is the handlebar mount kit. Whether or not this needs the spacers is dependent on how wide your diameter of handlebar is. Okay. So this is the mount that's gonna hold the battery. Oh wow, look at this. So this has its own little, little shower cap. <laughs> and that's where all the connectors go to the battery. So that allows you to take the battery off. Nice. Um, to charge it. Um, but then I guess you have to put the shower cap on to keep all the electronics dry. <laughs> so yeah, so the first question is whether we need those spacers. Mm. So you can fit the quick connect handlebar mount over the spacers onto the handlebar. That's if we need them. Okay. So I think we're gonna have to get rid of this front reflector. Okay. And luckily it's not too rusty. <laughs> so that's off. So now we've got this guy. I'm guessing we unclamp this entirely to fit it on. Put the quick connect handlebar mount over the spacers onto the handlebar. Tilt the mount up approximately 45 degrees. This is necessar necessary to ensure correct final installation. I mean, it was smart for them to ship it this way because then the um, spacers are in there. And they have more spacers in there as well. Looks like they have little Q-tips. <laughs> I wonder <laughs> when those come into play. Those are some weird looking Q-tips. I think they might be electrical contact cleaner. Yeah. We'll find out. So it fits on like this, and so we'll see if it needs the spacers. It does. Okay. okay. So then you put the anti-twist strap on like that. Do you want to take the bell off while we're at it? It's an old rusty bell. What are you talking about? <laughs> works oh, it great. Works. <laughs> All right, it works. Let's put the spacers on. And which direction is up? I think of oh, this direction. Okay. The switch logo. Yep, you got it. That's correct. Fit it over the spacers onto the handlebar. You're gonna tilt the mount up approximately 45 degrees. This is necessary to ensure final installation. Okay. You're gonna pass the anti-twist strap underneath the handlebar stem. So this little strap with the holes in it goes underneath the stem. Okay. And, and so then... it looks like you're gonna attach one side with that gotcha. first. Gotcha. So I'll just do kind of one at a time. Yeah. Still not clear what the anti-twist strap does. It but... prevents it from Doing oh, that. right, because it'll get stuck on this. Gotcha. This is, this is a fun game. Hit gravity two. Yeah. All right. I think I got it just threaded. Okay. So that's on, but then... So it says, secure the strap onto the other arm of the mount. Use the closest holes possible with the mount tilted upwards. Fold the strap back onto itself to increase its strength and keep it oh, looking tidy. It Tighten the screws. I did it wrong. I did it wrong. So I had the strap folded like they had it when I got it. And okay. so that meant that I don't have enough length. Instead of it folded, I want it like this. I'll fold it right at the end for some strength, but it's almost like this bike wasn't designed to have <laughs> any of this stuff that we're putting on it. I mean, it must it. be oh. really hard for them to come up with a design that works on every bike. It's true. And so far it's working. It's true. And set 45 degrees up. Mm -hmm. Let's make it easier to do this installation. So yeah, if you thought that you were gonna install this with just the quick start guide, you were not going to do that. <laughs> You're you, not. you need the instructions. Yeah. Um, uh, what did you do wrong now? Forgot the strap. Yeah. So annoying. You can see how like many installations, once you've done it once, the second time would be easy. 
Oh yeah, because you're gonna do this more than once. Well, you might. Maybe you have a whole family full of bikes. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I'm. It's not tight, tight. Right. So the next thing, you basically, fold the strap back so you're getting the extra strength, and you're gonna secure the strap onto the other arm. Okay. And fold the strap back onto itself. Tighten the screws. Keep it looking tidy. It says. Keep it looking tidy. Very British. Keep it looking tidy. Oh, but you know what? What'd you do now? So this part is interfering with this, and now I can't rotate it back. Well, do you have to? I think so. Otherwise, the battery's gonna be up at an angle. It physically won't go down, or? Correct, it's interfering right there. Well, I mean, that's what we have to live with. No, it, it will go past it, it's just. Oh, I, you have to, I have to loosen loose. past in it. So. Okay, so if you've got a weird middle bar, I wouldn't say weird. This but just, is not weird. It, mm, leave more room, you know? If you have a non-British handlebar, God. like on the Blix Soul bike, this would work smoothly because it's, it's a very British handlebar. Even though the Blix is a... Swedish bike. <laughs> well, and also already an e-bike. Sure. So you don't have to worry about it. There we go. Okay. Nice, but it does work. So yeah, that 45 degree thing they're talking about in the directions, that's only if you have a very smooth handlebar. We have one that has like a mountain bike front. Yeah. Maybe another idea switch would be to put a mountain bike handlebar direction subset. But honestly, if Jesse and I can figure it out. <laughs> um, turn the mount to face horizontally. This will put tension in the twist strap and keep the mount from turning any further. If in the future the mount sags, simply adjust to a new hole on the twist strap. Okay. I'm getting excited here because uh, it looks like we're nearing the end. You know what that's going to mean? What? Testing. Oh, yeah. It's going to mean fixing up the rest of the bike. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next is uh, connect the PAS to the quick connect handlebar mount. To connect the waterproof connector, find the arrow on each connector and align. Once aligned, push the connector pair together until no color is visible. OK, so there's an orange. I think orange goes with orange. And now we'll connect them together. Arrows. Click. No color visible. Now connect the motor. Connect the motor to the quick connect handlebar mount. Secure the motor wire to the fork with the cable ties provided. Leave enough slack for the handlebars to turn. If the motor cable is not long enough, you may need an extension cable. Luckily, this bike is so small that we have plenty of room. But so basically it's going to come up. We're going to zip mm -hmm. it off there, plug it in and then give it enough. I think I'm going to turn the bike handle like crazy all the way this way and that will be the slack that we'll have. Okay. To ensure the waterproof connector, align the arrows and push together until the arrow on the motor wire connector is touching the motor connector. You will hear and feel a click once they're pushed in all the way. So just because we have them, I'm gonna use yellow zip ties on our yellow bike. Getting exciting. Yeah. Oh, and isn't that cute? My other ride is a Tesla. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that's gonna go over your battery. I see. Okay, then I'll use a black. I forget if I told them that my other ride was a Tesla or not. <laughs> like if it was a Leaf, would it say oh. my other ride is a Leaf? Have we really done it? Have we really turned an old bike into an e-bike? I don't know. That seems like there's plenty of slack. Seems like the cables are going to be kept out of the way. Yeah, time for the battery, you think? I mean, why not? Okay, clicked in. Operation. Attach the power pack to the handlebars. Align the back of the power pack with the quick connect, blah, blah, blah. You hear the click. To disconnect, press the button on the handlebar mount and pull the power pack back up. Let me just see that disconnect. Press okay. That you press that button. Oh, that's nice. That nice. Off easily. Okay. You can do this with one hand, it says. To set up the power pack, you must first turn on the battery. The battery is shipped turned off for safety. So to do this, uh, by pressing firmly on the negative symbol in the back of the power pack. Okay. So right there. Okay, so do you fold that up? Yeah, you push pull that up so you can get to it. Okay. And you press firmly on the negative symbol on the back of the power pack. You can negative also symbol. use a blade cleaning tool to flick the switch. The switch? Oh, I see. Now, unfortunately, they shipped the charger plug and it says it's EU. So I don't know if we have, 
Yeah, they shipped us an EU cable. Luckily, we have so many of these that I think we'll be able to make this work. Okay. So just make sure when you're checking out on the Switch website that you make sure you tell them that you, where you live. Okay. Um, okay, so I've turned it on. Okay. And it looks like it's at half battery power, so it's enough to at least test with. Great. And then it looks like you can adjust the pedal assist right on the battery. Great. I think we were ready to test it. We'll pump up the tires maybe. Let's go. So we're gonna give it a test, see how it works. Um, turn on the battery. Okay, I'll set it to full power. Oh, yeah, I can feel it kicking in. It's giving some good power there. And now I'm gonna shift up. Yeah, it's definitely doing e-bike stuff. Let's see if I can shift up. There we go. Seems to be helping me. Yeah. Uh, this feels fine. The tires are kind of low, but that's okay. The cadence sensing seems to be working fine. And then when I stop pedaling, I'd say it's maybe a quarter to a half of a second of delay. But it, it will keep powering through if I have my brakes turned on, because um, there is no brake switch. You can add it as an accessory, a brake switch, but so far I haven't added it on. Yeah, it's definitely acting like an e-bike. It's giving me power, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I get good speed going without as much effort. This is really nice. All right. Yeah, it worked. Yeah? Yeah. So, um, you know, I think we I originally had to do a little finicking on the uh, on the cadence sensor, but now that I've done that, it's working uh, pretty well. So what's up with the five different settings? How'd that work? Um, I was in top speed, so I think it's just gonna try and, it's always gonna give me motor power. Um, I can do another test where we drop it down. My guess is that at a certain speed, which the motor can determine, it will stop giving me power. So that way, um, if I'm pedaling, it won't just continue to propel me forward. So it sounds like the motor's kicked off. Oh, kicked on for a second. Trying to really power through. It might just be motor power. I'm not hearing as much whine, and that could mean less motor torque. As I'm riding, I can adjust it. So I can shut it off. I can turn it up to one. I don't know what the difference is. We'll have to read and see what that is. Because yeah, I am able to pedal pretty quickly. I honestly didn't notice a difference. The different speed settings? Yeah, I mean, maybe it's giving me a little bit less power, but it was hardly noticeable. And what about that sound I was hearing? Is like a whine? How, how is the motor whine sound? That's definitely the motor. Um, planetary gearboxes tend to sound like that. Um, so it's pretty standard for a lot of uh, hub motor e-bikes to have kind of that planetary motor whine. Um, I feel like it was a bit more than usual, but I don't know. It probably is just because it's up front and not behind me where the sound is bouncing off my butt and my back. And what was it like having the extra weight of the motor in the front? I didn't really notice it, but you really notice it once you park. Um, obviously I have a 360 camera sticking off here, but it tends to do that. Because of the battery on the front or is that because of the motor? That's mm, a bit of both, but I think the battery definitely has uh, more of a bit of leverage there. So talk to me about the fact that it was obviously our first time installing one of these, but um, how was the installation process? And would you be open to doing this like again? 
So I think that the biggest strength is the replacing of the front wheel with the, uh, with the hub motor. I think that that is probably the smartest feature because that was easy, but it was also nice and strong. I would say that the pedal assist sensor is probably one of the weakest points in my opinion. It didn't take too much in the way of tools or, or skill to install, um, but I just think that it has the potential to get messed up the quickest. The good news is I think you can fix it all um, just by moving it around, but you can see if I bend it out of place, um, that's gonna mean that for half of my pedaling, um, I'm not getting any motor power. Again, that's an easy fix and everything else is zip tied to it. So in terms of like intrusiveness, we weren't drilling any holes. Everything is either clamped or zip tied to the bike. In that respect, I think that it's uh, pretty easy. All right, so that is the switch, uh, which turns your regular bike into an electric bike. And uh, I think for me, mm -hmm. I'm surprised. I had the bar really low mm -hmm. um, and I'm pleasantly surprised. Yeah, now obviously you're gonna be limited because this is a 250 watt motor, which means that you're not gonna be tackling really steep hills. It'll help for sure, um, but it's not going to just carry you up a hill all by itself. I guess my thought is if you had, you know, this is a crappy, you know, $200 bike. Yeah. Um, if you have like a $2,000 road bike or $4,000 road bike, um, it's nice that you don't have to go out and buy another $4,000 e-bike. But my kind of question is, do you want to put it onto a $4,000 beautiful bike? Um, that's a good question. I think also at the price point that this is at, um, that you can get an e-bike for like the whole bike for what you're paying for what you're strapping onto a bike. Um, is it more sustainable to have, you know, just get a new wheel and a new battery? Um, yeah, I think that that's great. And if that's something that you care about, I think that that's, uh, that's really nice. But I think that if you wanted a new e-bike where it's fully integrated and it would have, you know, already have the brake controllers and it would already have a, a throttle installed and a lot of those things are already taken care of for you, well, I do want to mention those are accessories that you can get with Switch. Um, we're showing you on the website right now. You can get a both twist throttle and a thumb throttle. You can also get a brake controller as well. True, but I mean, all of those things are going to have to be installed by you. And then when they brake or in any way not installed correctly, you ha only have yourself to blame. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you're a DIYer and you enjoy that kind of stuff, I think this is a really fun project. And I love the fact that this is a, a small battery that you can take with you and charge up. Yeah, I think that it's really cool that it is um, so small and removable. The only downside is you have to get that little shower cap. You gotta keep the... that with you. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, that's a little funny. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's a cute little uh, DIY project. And we're not even gonna touch range on here. We're gonna show you what the, you know, the manufacturer is saying you can get. It's a big range in range mm. because this depends on your bike. It depends on your pedaling and so forth. Yeah, um, I wouldn't expect to go, uh, you know, marathon biking in this because this is a very small e-bike bag. But if you drive it to work, you can easily pull this off, bring it into the office and charge it up. True. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you comment down below if you've got questions and let us know what you want us to review. We'll see you next time on Now Let's Review.